Hello, and welcome to the seventh episode of the George Macy Imagery video series. Said I wanted to do something a little bit different this time, since we've been on a bit of a first series kick. And today, me and Finn here, uh, who is deciding to insert himself into this video, we're going to talk about the two limited edition club Cerno de Bergerac's, which is what you see before you. Uh, I have great significance for this play because I was in it in community college uh, back in 2003. And uh, we did the Brian Hooker translation. And uh, I was the character of Comte de Guiche. So I was the main antagonist. And it was a lot of fun. I have very fond memories of that. These two books I purchased in 2016, if memory serves. And really were like wish list items because I've wanted to have these books for a long, long time. And as I mentioned when I was talking about my introduction to the Heritage Press, um, Serenade of Bergerac was the third Heritage Press book I got. So actually upgrading it to the LEC had been a long time wish. And I quickly fulfilled that. Thankfully, both of these did not cost me a ton. And they're both in good shape. Um, in fact, I think, I don't remember if uh, this one is complete or not. This one, I believe, is. But we'll find out once I get into it. And now Flavia's in the frame. It's going to be, apparently, the most cat-heavy episode yet <laughs> of this video series. They're usually pretty involved with the uh, <coughs> other video series I do on video games. Um, but let's go ahead and get started um, with Sarno de Bergerac, number one. So this was the first attempt. There's a bit of story behind these books, but I'll save that for the end. Um, so this is not complete, but it does have the card. I came out. So there's all the production details. And this was the uh, August book in the 10th series. 7th series. Tenth, it was the 10th volume of the 7th series. There we go. I have to remember how these work. <laughs> uh, so this came out in August of 1936. And uh, while I get to the title page, we will... Uh, jump into production details. Uh, Macy did not comment on this in the corto, and I will uh, pull this a little bit closer to the camera here in a minute. So this is the Brian Hooker translation, so I would be familiar with this one. Um, illustrated with watercolors by Sylvain Sauvage, printed in color holotype, Designed and printed by Edmund B. Thompson at Hawthorne House in Wingham, Connecticut, sit in linotype Jansen on worthy special paper, bound by Russell Rudder Company in New York in full rust color linen, stamped brown and gold, 246 pages, 9 and a quarter by 11 and 3 eighths inches. So let's get a little bit of a closer look here. Um, just a lovely title page. So Savon Sauvage is one of my favorite illustrators, and we saw a bunch of him on the Anatole France video that I did. Uh, this was one of the other ones that he did issue signed. Um, and as I mentioned probably in that episode, design-wise it took a lot of um, a lot of pointers from that uh, first Anatole France book, which I believe was uh, the Queen, uh, the sign of Queen Petescu. Uh, even though the designer was a bit completely different, it's kind of interesting. I think uh, Sauvage might have had a little bit more of a hand on design elements. So each section starts like this with this nice little curtain call set up. Here's a page of the text. 
And then we'll do a couple of the illustrations here. Here is... Sarano harassing a Montfleury. <laughs> um, let's see if I could find one of my character in here. Uh, the watercolors in here are spectacular. Master of his craft, and this is like the ideal way to illustrate this book. Um, that's not to say that our second LEC is lacking. Uh, because uh, you will see Pierre Broussard also did a spectacular job illustrating Sarano as well. It's wonderful that two masterclass illustrators did this for the LEC. Here I am. <laughs> Here I am, I say. So I'm the character on the right. Sarano is preventing me from trying to get to Roxanne so that they, um, she could wed Christian. What a lovely, lovely book this is. Um, I'm stoked to have this in my collection. Um, this particular one, as we see here, there was 1,500 copies printed. And uh, Sauvage did sign it, and this is number 510. It's unfortunate that Sauvage only got a few LECs out before he uh, passed away. But, uh, you know, the ones he put out were exceptionally good. Number two. So, like I said, the Heritage Edition of this was my introduction to... Um, actually realizing what the Heritage Press was. Um, and getting the LEC of this was a delight because it is an upgrade over the Heritage in just about every conceivable way material-wise. But um, I will say that the Heritage is very nice and it is definitely worthwhile picking up if you are not interested in Brasold's signature or prefer the paper that they used for the boards, which is really nice. Um, let's get to the title page. But before I do that, let's check out this lovely curtain call illustration that Brasol did. So, when I, I wasn't joking. Like, Sarano was illustrated by two of my favorite illustrators. <laughs> um, just beautiful, beautifully done. Um, let's go ahead and just plop this here so it doesn't fold back over. Here's your production details. So, the second issue was translated with an introduction by Louis Udermeyer, illustrated with watercolors by Pierre Broussard, Key Black, printed by the Photo Graveur and Color Company in New York, hand colored by Walter Fisher, New York, designed by George Macy, printed by the Marchbanks Press, New York, set in lithotype New Roman, Oops, sorry. Set in lithotype Times Roman, Curtis rag paper, bound by Russell Rudder Company, New York, in full patterned brocade, tan leather label, gold stamped, 226 pages, 7 by 10 and a quarter inches. This was in the 22nd series, and was the 8th volume in that, so that would make it... November 1953 issue. Um, this was probably one of the last books George Macy designed. Um, he did design a couple following this, but it was definitely among the last before he passed away. Actually, he did quite a few right before he passed away. Um, this is my preferred text of Serena de Bergerac. I think that Udermeyer just did a splendid, splendid job on this text. Um, Udermeyer is all over the LEC. Um, he's done a lot. Um, but this I, think, this, I think, is his finest moment. So while this one doesn't have the cute little like curtain backdrop that uh, the earlier edition did, 
the font's nice. And uh, Versailles illustrations are kind of scattered throughout like this. And now that we're actually in the play proper, I really like this way of doing the text. It makes it very quick and easy to read because the names are so small. You can quickly jump around to different characters if you're looking around for stuff. Um, let's see if I can find myself in here again. Um, there's more color to these than in the heritage in terms of the illustrations. Just as a heads up. Um, the illustrations are still nice in the Heritage Edition, but they are not as color rich. The, the Geish is on the left there, and this is towards the end. So here is the Colophon. Again, not quite as nicely designed as the other one, but uh, this is copy 990 and Brasold signed. Um, Brasold is one of my favorites, and I nearly have everything he's done for the LEC, as well as um, the signed Heritage Press book he did, um, which was the very first one of those I found. And that's a story all in itself, which is on the blog. And I'll just go ahead and link that here so you can check that out. Um, I did promise a story about Sarano, and I need to actually get onto the blog to do that. So one second while I meander over there. Why did this book happen? Why did we have a second version of Sereno de Bergerac? Well, it comes down to the illustrator, Pierre Broussard. And it also comes to the translator, who was not Louis Udemeyer in the original edition that was planned. So, ultimately, Broussard got the opportunity to illustrate Sereno de Bergerac. We, I don't know off the top of my head if he had won one of the club's many contests, if he pitched the idea and Macy wanted to redo it with a new translation, I don't know the particulars off the top of my head. What my post says is that he had been on the run in Europe during World War II. So, Bersald had done a couple of things before this. He had done Manon Lescaut for the Heritage Press and The Two Gentlemen of Verona for the LEC Shakespeare. Um, but then he vanished until 1950 when he came back with um, illustrations that were converted into woodcuts for uh, Madame Bovary in 1950. This followed in 1954. And then St. Simon's Memoirs was issued in 1959. And then he passed away in 1964. So that's Pierre Broussard's history um, with the LEC. And um, when Macy was able to get back in touch with Broussard, he pitched the idea of printing the Sereno they had originally planned to do. And Broussard responded, paraphrasing Macy here. In the intervening years, he has certainly grown older and possibly wiser that he certainly ought to make a new set of pictures which would be better pictures. So he did. Brand new art and it's splendid. Like I said, both of the Serenos that the LEC issued are beautiful books with their illustrations and they are perfect for this play. Um, let's get to the translator now. So, when the club started Sereno, they wanted to use Jacques Le Clerc, who had already done a lot of work for the LEC. Um, <clears throat> we recently mentioned Le Clerc with a couple of the first series books, because he was involved with a couple of those. He had performed the task and submitted it to the Heritage Press for a Heritage exclusive version of the play, which might explain why we have two of these. <laughs> um, but Macy and the LEC, or at least the Heritage Club, felt that La Clarique did not recapture Sereno's talents of poetry in English. 
or as the Sandglass puts it, he had not made real poems out of the set pieces. So the Hooker translation was probably what they issued, and then they were going to do a heritage exclusive with Broussard and with La Clarique. But La Clarique didn't work out. Broussard had to go on the run. So when they reconnected with um, Broussard, they pulled in Udermeyer. And Udermeyer did a splendid job, like I was saying earlier, um, just de just definitive. Definitive way to read Serenade de Bergerac, in my opinion, in English, is Udermeyer. I love this book. I love this book. I love this play. I love both the illustrators. This is like a win-win situation for me and are among my favorite LECs in the whole canon. So that is what I wanted to spotlight for this month's video series. So until next month, um, we will uh, bid adieu, to be French for a second, and uh, look forward to this month's book post, which is Vatek, uh, which is a gorgeous book. That's going to be a lovely one to, to show off. So look forward to that as well. Thank you for watching. Take care.